Hey everybody, it's Brad. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, the different ways you can do lettering uh, in Floriani. Um, so, if you're following along with me, in my Floriani today, choose Create a New Design, and go to the Text tool, which is in the upper left-hand area of the screen. Um, and when you do that, your cursor turns into a capital letter A. Uh, and you can just left-click anywhere, and it's going to bring in the default letter is just a capital letter A. Um, so to be able to do anything with this, you have to go into your properties menu over here in the upper right hand area. Uh, and here we have a little area where we can type in. So you can go in and type in whatever you have to say. Remember, nothing's going to change over here though until you hit apply. Okay, so I've got my word. It's meadow. Um, and next to that is a little preview of what the font is. And what's nice about it, when you hover your mouse over this, it actually shows you... Sorry, my mouse keeps moving when I let my hand off of it. It shows you the available characters in this font. Not all the fonts have uh, both upper and lower case, and they don't all have the numbers, and they don't all have the symbols. This one has upper and lower case. It only stays for a little while. Upper and lower case, numbers, and symbols, and it tells me the recommended height range is between 0.2 and 0.79 inches. That's all very useful information to have. Um, you know, so that way I know how big I can make my letters before they start looking weird, um, and how small I can make them before they start looking weird. Um, so that's I can set my height here in inches. Uh, right now it's at 0.79, that's as high as this font will go. Um, and then next to my height here, I've got the name of the font, and I can actually click this little downward arrow and choose different fonts. Again, they don't change till I hit apply. Um, it looks like it would be annoying to go and scroll through all these fonts to pick one at a time, but in fact, if you've got this highlighted, which it is by default after you select a font, you can hit the up and down arrow keys on your keyboard, and it actually will show you a, a preview without having to look through each one. So I'm scrolling through, and I can see the different fonts that I have available to me. I find one that I like, I hit apply, and I can see what it looks like. Okay. Um, I also have the option to change the spacing between the letters uh, in a uniform way. Uh, if I want to increase the spacing between every single letter, I can go in and change this number, ooh, 58, that'd be too much, hit 5. There, see it spaces the letters out. Um, you know, so depending on <clears throat> what uh, what you're doing, you might want to space the letters out. Decor, this is only used in monograms. We're not going to talk about this in video. In this video, um, the line spacing, this only comes into play if you have more than one line. So I'll type in another line and hit apply. See, so here we go. If I change the line spacing now, say to 50, it increases the amount of space between the two lines. Uh, so that's useful. Your alignment here, this works just like in a word processor. Um, if I've got it currently, I have it set on center. So these are lined up along kind of an imaginary center line here. Um, if I change this to left, hit apply, see how they line up on the left. And similarly, you can set it to right and have them line up on the right. The default is center. Okay, reverse direction, this is only available if you're doing lettering on a circle, and we'll get to that. Um, italic will italicize the letters, basically rotate each letter slightly um, so that it uh, appears italic. Um, uh, optimize colors, just always leave that check checked. Uh, if not, you can get some weird looking colors if you um, have different colored letters, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to leave it on optimize letters. Start at means it's going to start and go left to right rather than however it feels like doing. Um, you know, if I do right, it's going to go right to left. Uh, it's really not that important where you have that set. Um, stairs is a, an option I have here, and what this does is it takes my letters and puts them like they're going down steps, and it only works on one line. So if you've got more than one line, the rest of it's gone uh, if you do this. So we're not going to do that, but that's what that button does. Um, so that's how you do <coughs> single to multi-line lettering. Um, and if I wanted to, um, say, just sew out just plain lettering um, on a shirt or uh, where, you know, wherever I want to put the, the letters, this is how you would do it. 
Um, again, I can adjust my size of my letters is best done in the height button right here. But you can also change it. See this little up and down arrow that I've got right here? I want to hover my mouse over it, it becomes a crosshair. This will increase or decrease my size. Uh, and I can do it just by kind of by, by looking at it to see what size it is. So that's a way to do it. I prefer to do it over here, a little more precise control over your size. Um, and uh, similarly, we can actually do all sorts of adjustments uh, in here with these little handles. So each one of these little blue kind of triangles next to each other is going to increase the spacing of a single letter. Okay, so I'm changing the distance between the M and the E here. So if I've got kerning issues, uh, kerning is the space between uh, letters, um, and the fonts aren't all perfect. Sometimes, you know, one letter looks too far away, like on an old typewriter. Uh, you can adjust that with these little handles. Um, this green circle in the middle will actually bow up my letters. So if I'm trying to make like a stylized kind of logo, you can stretch your letters out on the top and bottom, give it kind of like a 3D effect. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. Uh, but that's what these here and here do. It doesn't give you an option for that um, on the sides. Uh, but you only, so you can do bow out the top and bottom. This will stretch your letters without increasing their size, height-wise. So if you want to fill up more real estate, you can stretch the letters out, although you can get them looking deformed uh, if you do that. The uh, diamond shapes that you see in each letter will actually allow you to select that letter individually. So if I wanted to do kind of a stylized thing where the M is much bigger than the rest of it, I can do that. And I can also move an individual letter. If I move my mouse over that diamond, see it becomes a little symbol with little arrows, that will allow me to move a single letter independent of the rest of this. You can also rotate it. Now it says Wedo. That's weird. Anyway, I'm going to move it back right. Um, so yeah, that's mm, the basics of doing regular straight across lettering um, using the fonts that are built into this program, uh, of which there's a lot. <laughs> These are all hand digitized fonts. These are all more or less guaranteed to sew out nicely, uh, and they, they, they will on most things. They'll sew out great. Um, they're not auto digitized. A person went in and and set where the stitches go uh, on these designs, so they're they're made to sew out nice, and they do. They're they're actually significantly better than the lettering that's built into your sewing machine um, because they have underlay that can be changed, and um, the they can be set to different pull compensations for if you're sewing on strange fabrics when you go to save to sew. Um, now, what else can we do with this? Well, we can do a lot of stuff actually. Let's say we wanted to put some letters on a circle. Say, we'll just put meadow on a circle. Let's hit apply. So I've just got the one line. Oop, I'm on a font that only has capital letters. So let me pick another font real quick. Okay, now I want to put these on a circle so they're on an arc going this way. What you do is under type, which I didn't talk about, I just left it on normal before. I'm going to change the type from normal to circle and hit apply. Now my letters are on a circle. Generally you want to do this um, when you're combining a design with an embroidery design and you want to have the letters kind of wrap around it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and import a design from my design library. Uh, remember we added all those designs into our design library earlier. Um, so I've got all these free monthly designs to choose from. Or maybe I'll bring Tinkerbell in. When you pick the one you want, you just left click on it and drag it into the design area and let go. There we go. Now this doesn't match up perfectly. Um, I would really rather have this circle that this is on be a little bit wider. Um, but my circle is gone. How can I adjust it? Well, if you click off of letters while you're editing them, you are no longer in the letter editing mode. So to get to that, we actually have to choose our text tool again. Now my circle's back. So to adjust the size of the circle, this button right here looks like it should only be rotate, but it's not just rotate. It's both rotate 
and the size of the circle. So if I move my mouse left and right, I actually rotate the letters. If I move my mouse up and down, I increase and decrease the radius of the circle that the letters are on. So I'm going to move it up, it will increase the radius of the circle, the circle, and then I can click and drag to move my letters down. There, that fits a little better. Now, there's no good way to have letters going across the top and across the bottom um, in, in a single screen. So what you have to do is cheat a little. So what we're going to do is go to the select tool here. We're going to right click on the lettering and choose copy. We're going to right click again and choose paste. Now I've got two the word meadow on top of one another. And what I can actually do with that is <clears throat> I just click on one of them it doesn't matter which one. Type in what I wanted to say. Hit apply. And then left click on reverse direction. I should have done that before hitting apply. Then hit apply. And look, it's on the exact same circle. And matches perfectly. Now I can move this. So if I want this to be up a little farther, I can do that. And look at that. Nice little circle logo. Customize, you know, whatever you want. And, and you can adjust the way the circle uh, is uh, on your design. Import your own designs in, whatever you want to do. So now when I'm satisfied with this, I again, I just go to File, Save to Sew, choose what type of material it is, say Yes, Next, Finish, and save it to my, to my uh, flash drive. And I could go sew it out. So that's how you do basic lettering. Um, in the next video, I'm going to go into some of the other more advanced types of lettering that we can get into. Um, I'll see you then.